Socrates, the man who knew too much to know anything. Most people's knowledge of Socrates comes down to a few key facts. He was a philosopher. He lived in ancient Greece. He sipped a nasty little cocktail of hemlock. And finally, he looked a bit like your philosophy teacher with his bushy beard and pensive gaze. But let's try to paint a clearer picture. This guy Socrates didn't write a single word of philosophy himself, at least nothing that survived the sands of time. Instead, we know about him through his students, most notably Plato. Now, if you think about philosophy as a massive, multi-level gym where ideas are constantly getting worked out, Socrates is like the ultimate personal trainer who never stopped asking, do you even lift intellectually? He was famous for his method of questioning, aptly named the Socratic method. Instead of telling you what he knew, Socrates would relentlessly ask you questions until you either came to some profound realization or wanted to throw him out of a window. The point was to stimulate critical thinking and illuminate ideas through dialogue. Why is this so important? Because Socrates essentially set the foundation for Western philosophical thought. He shifted the focus from pre-Socratic philosophers, who were all about explaining the physical world, to moral and ethical questions like, what is virtue? And how should we live? This pivot was huge. It led to entire fields of philosophy. But here's the real kicker about Socrates. He claimed to know nothing, thereby positioning himself as an intellectual midwife, helping others give birth to their ideas. Yet by knowing nothing, he became the wisest of all. It's like a paradox wrapped in an enigma, wearing a toga. And for his efforts? Well, Athenians weren't super thrilled with his knack for making them feel intellectually inadequate, not to mention his habit of questioning everything, from democracy to the Athenian gods. The powers that be sentenced him to death for corrupting the youth and impiety. And Socrates? He could have escaped. His buddies had it all planned out. But he was stubborn. Philosophers, go figure. He argued that he'd lived by the laws of Athens his whole life, and to scurry off now would be a hypocrite's move. So he downed that hemlock like a champ. From Portland, Oregon to the ancient streets of Athens, we're still talking about this guy. Why? Because he dared to ask the hard questions, to challenge the status quo, and he stuck to his principles, even in the face of death. And that, my friends, is why Socrates is a cornerstone of philosophy. His legacy is the critical, inquisitive mindset that many strive to embody today. Who knows? Without him, I might not be sitting here contemplating the deeper implications of why the Portland rain feels like existential tears, or pondering the good life with Socratic zeal through the evergreen muse that is Oregon's natural backdrop.